All right, this logo, this black shape logo on top of this sketch has come a long way. And it's reading pretty well without the sketch. And because everything is a, a vector path, it's very clean. The weirdest shape by far is this kind of shape that's created by the grip around the microscope handle. But coming back to it, I was worried it was too wonky, but coming back to it, it looks okay. So what is left? If I turn on the sketch, I just need another finger and I need this mark here. And there's a bunch of ways we can get this, but I think the way I liked the best was to use the pencil tool and use a stylus. So if you ever can't find a tool, you can always go to these three dots and you can see the tools that aren't being shown and are being shown. And then you can drag them in, right? So the pencil tool is already, if it shows up in bright white here, it means it's not included in your toolbar yet. So you can always include it. My pencil tool is with my shaper tool and smooth tool because this is Adobe Illustrator 2021. I haven't updated yet to 2022. And if I double click on the pencil, I can set its smoothness versus its accuracy. I want these to look really smooth and uniform, so I'm putting smooth all the way to the right. And then I just draw the shape, but I have to to close the path, that's important. So wherever I start it, I need to make sure I go all the way around until you get that little circle next to the pencil tool and then it will close the path completely so it's not an open path. Once I have that, because I had smooth all the way, it didn't plot that many anchor points. Then I can play with the stroke size, which will grow it in thickness on both sides. And because I've already been using a black stroke, that's the default. And this looks pretty good, except for that sharp point there, which I don't love. I can use my large selection tool, my black selection tool, and move it into place. I can use that kind of like a transform box to squish it if I want. And now this is the really important thing. I don't want to leave it as a stroke. Instead, I want to go to Object, Path, Outline the Stroke. And that makes it into a fill path, not a stroke path. But it's a fill path with a hole in it, like a donut. And unlike the stroke, which automatically generates off of the path, when you've outlined your stroke, you have two sets of anchors. You have the inside edge, I'll do it with the small selection tool, and the outside edge. And then I'm gonna use the pencil tool again, still on smooth, and I'm gonna redraw this corner to smooth that out. I can hit Command Z if I don't like how it turned out. And as long as I start on the path and end on the path, it'll be clean. Same thing here. Actually, I'm going to keep it pretty sharp there, but I want to round out this outside edge. That looks good. Same thing with this. I'm just holding down Command. That's really the only shortcut key I often use in Illustrator. Command will take you to the last selection tool you used. Because in order to use the pencil tool this way, you have to be able to see the anchor points. And if you can see the anchors, then I can draw through them. And I can, like magic scissors, redraw that inside just a little bit. Because I just want that to open up just a little bit. But you got to start on the path and end on the path. <laughs> you see what happens when you don't. There we go. Okay, now how do you clean that up? I've shown you a lot about like rounding corners, but that's where some other tools come in, including the anchor point tool that's delete anchor point. And then I use my 
small selection tool, or what Illustrator calls your direct selection tool, the white arrow. And then I can tug at the different corners. And then here I can even play with these anchor points. As long as I click on the anchor point alone, I can even just move it or delete it entirely. So kind of like that. So you have full control. It's just you have to be a little analytical about it. So now all my fingers are kind of a clean, even line weight. Feels very predictable. I'll do the same thing with these marks, but notice these marks are not equal weight. So I'm going to start with the pencil tool and just do the usual stroke. And I really messed that up. There you go. If you're having trouble getting an angle, this is actually true in Photoshop and in Illustrator. It's going to be very true when we do digital inking on the next assignment. If you're having trouble drawing what you want with the angle, you can use the hand tool. And the hand tool usually just kind of moves us around when we're zoomed in, but underneath the hand tool is called the rotate tool. So I can rotate the view without actually rotating the project. And if I rotate the view, I can get sometimes, just like you would rotate a piece of paper while you're drawing it or inking it, I can get a better angle for what I'm drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that, and then I'm going to grow the stroke. Something I haven't mentioned to you is that there's more than one type of stroke. So this is the most basic type. It just grows it exactly a set number of distance, of point distance, This, in this case 12 point from the center. But this is what's called a uniform stroke. If you look next to the point size under your tool options, you can have it taper from thin to, to thick. You can have it wave. You can have it do lots of things. The problem is that's all computer generated, right? You can't control exactly where it will do those things. But taper is often a pretty helpful one. You know, if you want it to look a little bit more uniform than what you can hand draw. And then if I do create outlines of that, it will create it with the taper. And then I can just double click on the rotate to get it back to its original orientation. And then I can see if I like that with the taper or not. But nothing else is tapered, so I think that's a little strange. But you have these different options for your stroke. You also have secondary options sometimes, which is like draw the stroke with an oval, draw it with a circle, and that will round edges. But of course, just like any stroke, we don't want to end it with that. So I'm going to change my stroke. I need to get back to my tool options for it. There it is. I'm going to make it uniform, you know, just basic and uniform. And then I'm going to create outlines under Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. You need to do that to all your strokes before you finish your black shapes. If I do that, I can use various options. This is what I have been doing. I can just pull the corners, soften all the corners a little bit. And if I want to do that more, I certainly can. I'm going to base it on my sketch, but then I'm not a slave to my sketch. I can stretch it. Now that it's an outline stroke, you see how that can change the distance and the, the width. I can rotate it. And then, of course, I can use the pencil tool to redraw if I need to. 
like that, for instance. I'm going to hook this back up a little bit more. But I don't want to create a new path. I need to work from an existing path and then end through an existing path, like so. Smooth it out. And often to do that in a really uniform way, you just get rid of extra anchor points and just play with the curves. If you're trying to keep things looking really clean. And Command Z if you do something you don't like. Here's another trick I really like when you're trying to keep things clean. Instead of just moving one anchor point around at a time, you can use the lasso tool. And you can select like a corner, for instance, like that, and it will select all the anchor points there. And then you can use the small move tool to move that corner around. And that can give you some nice complex curves. All right. Beauty. Now, here is another fun trick. What if I like this shape, but I think it needs to get a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker? I can add a stroke to it. And I can increase its overall size. So now I have a fill path with a stroke. And then if I wanted to, I could outline that again because I don't want to leave anything with the stroke. Sometimes what that helps me see is anything that's a little wobbly as well. And if you're getting paid, you know, thousands of dollars to do this logo design, you're going to clean that up. But as we're just learning it, I don't need you to be so precise. But that's going to bug me. And so then I, I look to see why that is. And it has to do with this curves up oh, with this curve and that handle. And so I'm going to tuck that in so that wobble doesn't exist. So once you understand the advantages of it, it really is a nice program. And then I can use the smooth tool if I want to average out the curve amongst the anchor points. OK, so I'm going to turn off my sketch now. I'm going to save this as an AI file. So this is my. Spring 2022 Carl Assignment 4 Vector Logo AI file. This is my working format. The problem is an AI file can only be opened in Adobe Illustrator. So now I need to also say file, save as. And I'm going to save it as an SVG, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. Save that. Replace the old one I had, which I just demoed. These all go into my folder, but I would recommend saving them onto your desktop. So there's my SVG file. If I open that up in preview, you'll see what that looks like. Now, SVG files can be opened by any vector program. And they can be um, uploaded to Pixabay if you wanted to share your vector graphics. All right, so we've saved it as an AI file. We've saved it as an SVG. But the one we really need to save to be useful to us with Adobe Photoshop and for printing in this lab is to save it as an EPS. So EPS is another type of vector format that is the only type that's usable by Photoshop in the ways we need it to be usable. <laughs>